So last week, me and four of my friends shot a documentary. We're actually working on a production company together called Blue Grays, where we're gonna be working on branded and non-branded documentaries, as well as events. And this was our first chance to see whether this engagement and the way we work together is actually gonna connect. I'm a huge believer in making sure that if you're gonna work with your friends, it works well that there's a level where you can step back and go okay with friends but right now we're all here for a common purpose to make this hustle work i went into it with little to no expectations i really wanted to strip that away let the external pressure go away and just try and make something i've never worked on a documentary before especially as a director and producer on a documentary, so that was very intimidating. The original documentary was about us rediscovering Cornwall um, as we all lived there a year ago and we decided to come back and rediscover the culture of the Sea Shanty Festival. But we realized very quickly that that wasn't a great theme and left it very open. And there wasn't that sort of divide and something that we could actually share with people. So instead, we sat down and we had a conversation and we decided to take a different direction in the documentary. Instead, it was now a documentary that was focused on the bands, the way the festival works, and learning and engaging with the audience about the culture and the history of Cornwall. We love the energy, the environment, the culture, and the Sea Shanty Festival was a great way to demonstrate that. So for us, it was a no brainer to make the documentary about that. And one of the main things I learned towards the beginning of the documentary was to kill your darlings. I needed to let go of this thing that I thought would work when in reality, it just never was going to. It led a lot of problems. And after sitting down as a team and shooting it, I can now say a week later, that I'm really happy with the overall product. And I'm glad, I'm so glad we had that conversation as a team to go, this isn't a good idea. We need to, we need to figure this out before we shoot anything. So my number one piece of advice for anyone who is starting to make a documentary or who wants to make a documentary, do not do anything until you know what that storyline is. I didn't understand that as I came from a scripted background and now going into a non-scripted background, I just thought that that wasn't necessary. When in reality it actually is, the audience still really have the same questions of what is the story? Who are my characters? What's the conflict of this story? And how are we gonna get from point A to point B? And I walk out of that film going, wow, I learned something. What is it that they're going to learn? This was also my introduction to interviewing people. Now, I thought it was just lay up a couple cameras and ask questions, when in reality, it's not as easy as that. Your questions have to come from two places. One, to appease the audience, and two, to appease the people that you're interviewing. The last thing you want is for the people you're interviewing to feel uncomfortable or for not feel welcome, because they're going to give you bland and boring answers. If I ask them, what do you think about Cornwall? It's too broad, they can go any way. And most of the times, the, the general public get a bit overwhelmed and they just give you a basic answer. I think Cornwall's nice. I like the weather. I'm not gonna put that in a documentary. So you have to give these people that you're interviewing questions, questions that are going to get a specific answer from them. What's your favorite moment from the previous Sea Shanty Festival? What are you most looking forward to this weekend? What makes you different from other bands? What makes you jealous of band? What's your favorite song to perform? Those are questions that are specific, but give us a story. It informs us about these characters, but also gives us a narrative into culture and the festival. And I've got to say, we interviewed some characters, man. <laughs> Especially when you're filming a festival where people are drinking from 10 a.m. until midnight for four days straight you definitely do get some characters and you learn very quickly that you have to adapt. You can't go in there with every single person and act the same and ask the same questions. You have to make them feel comfortable in front of a camera. And for us, it was incredibly important as well because we're a small company and this is our first project. We're looking to expand and we need people to work with. So establishing strong brands and networking now helps us connect with them in the future. And if they ever want a music video, chances are they're gonna think of us because of that. 
And that leads me on to my final point. Yes, this was a self-funded project. We did it with just a crew of five, four of us who are part of Blue Grade Productions and one who just came on as production assistant, Jesse. Um, we had very minimal gear, very minimal equipment. It was all our own. We never hired anything out. It was just us and there was no bubble support system or backup to fall on if anything went wrong. And that was a big risk, but we learned so much throughout the weekend. It will be uploaded on this YouTube channel in the future, so make sure you subscribe if you're interested in watching it. I really like shooting with our gear as well. I actually bought this brand new Fujifilm X-T3 for this shoot, and I've had it for about three weeks now. I'm gonna make a review on it in the future, but spoiler alert, this camera's fantastic. I can't believe I didn't do the upgrade sooner from 1080 to 4K to S-Log to photography as well. This camera is a game changer and I loved shooting with it. I also shot on a gimbal as well this time, which I was very hesitant to do as I wasn't fully confident with the gimbal, but with a bit of practice beforehand and just having that on-set experience, it was brilliant and I felt like I became really comfortable with my gear and was learning so much on the journey. I've got the H5 in here. Yeah. And I'm on, on the sound card. I'm going to capture some sounds. Cheers, the boy. Cheers, the Lumix. Okay. Very sexy camera. Got yes. Very nice video quality. Yeah? How have you uh, found it? Really cool. No, it's, it's really easy to work around. Nice, yeah. Um, great camera to use. Some. Uh, Great kind of quality to it. We stayed in a really nice Airbnb and the living room kind of turned into this equipment room where we just had all the stuff in the evenings. We'd offload footage and charge batteries and we talk about the documentary and art and, and life. Mmm, sausage. <laughs> I really felt like I got to live whilst making this documentary as well. And I got to discover that I actually really enjoy this, making these projects myself. I'm still gonna be practicing and I'm sure it's not gonna be perfect, but I genuinely believe we're onto something here. And I really look forward to the future of this documentary and this company. I'm really posting more on Instagram and I'm gonna be posting weekly on YouTube now. I'm very committed and serious to this. Please take five seconds out of your day to just subscribe, like the video, and follow me on Instagram. I'm taking my social content creation a lot more seriously as I go into the freelance world very soon. I'm very excited about that. And if you wanna follow me on my journey, now's the perfect time to do it.